Lesson 13.2a, Finding the Area of a Triangle. We can categorize triangles by their angles. If there are three angles that are less than 90 degrees, that totals 180 degrees, it's an acute triangle. And if it has one right angle of 90 degrees, then it's a right triangle. And if it has one angle greater than 90 degrees, it's an obtuse triangle. We can also categorize them by their sides. If all the sides are the same length, then it's an equilateral triangle. If it has two equal sides of the same length and then a different side length, then it's an isosceles triangle. And if it has no equal sides, all three sides are different lengths, it's a scalene. When we draw a diagonal in a rectangle, we'll divide the rectangle into two right triangles. We have a right triangle here, here's the 90 degree corner, and we have a right triangle here, here's the 90 degree corner. And the formula for the area of a rectangle is A equals BH, which means the area is equal to the base times the height. This shows us that the area of the triangle can be found as half the area of the rectangle. We can compare the formula for the area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle. The area of a rectangle is the area is equal to the base multiplied by the height. But we also know that there are two triangles here. So the area of a triangle is equal to half the base times the height. For a right triangle, the base and height are represented by either of the two sides that form the right angle. So we can say this long side is the base, or we could say the short side is the base, and that's the height. The height of a triangle is the length of a perpendicular line segment between the side chosen as its base and the opposite vertex. So for this triangle, here's the height. For this triangle, that's an isosceles one, isn't it? Here's the height. Here's an equilateral triangle. Here's the height. And we can see this is a scalene triangle. All three sides are different lengths. The height can be shown on the outside of a scalene triangle. So we extend the base out, and then we make our perpendicular line going straight up, and that's the height. But be careful, this is still the base from this point to this point. So for your notes, the area of a triangle is half the product of its base B and height H. We multiply the base times the height, and we can multiply that by half, we have our area. We need to find the area of this triangle. We can see the base is 20 centimeters and the height is 10 centimeters. We put 20 centimeters for the base and 10 for the height, and we multiply. Half times 20, half of 20 is 10. Now we multiply it to that 10, we have 100 centimeters squared. We can write it with a cm for centimeters with a little two exponent, or we can write the words square centimeters. But remember to use square units when working with area. Let's try it without a diagram. A triangle has a base of 9 inches and a height of 4 inches. What is the area? The formula is A is equal to half BH. We know our base is 9, our height is 4. We substitute them into the formula. And the commutative property of multiplication states that we can multiply in any order and we'll get the same product to avoid a decimal amount from multiplying half times 9 we can multiply 9 times 4 first. Now we have half times 36, that gives us 18, a whole number. We write it as 18 inches square or square inches. If we had multiplied half times 9 first, we would have gotten 4 and 5 tenths. Then we would have needed to multiply that to the 4. But by multiplying the 9 times 4 first and getting 36, Half of 36 is 18. We stayed with a whole number. We might have even been able to solve that with mental math. Okay, we finished the first part of this lesson. We're going to move on to the last part, problem solving using area of triangles. Have a nice day, and I hope you'll join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.